Welcome to the Step 1 Review Study Guide, and in this lesson, we learn about protein synthesis and post-translational modifications. Let's start with initiation. Before initiation, tRNA gets charged into aminoacyl tRNA by aminoacyl synthetase, which adds the specific amino acid with ATP hydrolysis. Now initiation can begin. Eukaryotic initiation factors, or EIFs, locate the 5' cap. Next, the EIFs build the 40S ribosomal subunit, along with initiator tRNA. This complex scans the mRNA until it finds a start codon. The EIFs will then find and assemble the 60S ribosomal subunit. Then, the EIFs get released by GTP hydrolysis. In eukaryotes, the ribosome is built from 40S and 60S subunits that make up the 80S ribosome. And in prokaryotes, the subunits are 30S and 50S to make the 70S ribosome. Eukaryotes have an even ribosome, and prokaryotes have a prime ribosome. In both, proteins are synthesized from the N to C terminus. Now, elongation can begin. First, an elongation factor in linked GTP binds to the tRNA. The elongation factor brings the tRNA into the A site of the ribosome unless it is a start codon which goes straight to the p-site. rRNA catalyzes the peptide bond formation between the two amino acids. GTP is hydrolyzed, which pushes the ribosome up towards the 3' end. The original tRNA stays in the e-site transiently before it leaves the ribosome. Then the elongation factor disassociates and exchanges its GDP for a GTP. The renewed elongation factor can then bind to the next tRNA and the cycle repeats, elongating the peptide as it reads the mRNA. Finally, a stop codon is reached. A tRNA-like structure called release factor binds to the ribosome in the A site, where it cleaves the peptide from the ribosome in the P site. The ribosome constituents dissociate from each other and are recycled leaving the translated protein. After translation is complete, some proteins like trypsinogen need to be cleaved at the N or C terminus to be converted into its active form. Another modification are covalent modifications. Phosphorylation, glycosylation, hydroxylation, methylation, acetylation, and ubiquitination are all common covalent modifications. Proteins need to fold properly to achieve full activity as well. Chaperone proteins can assist with this process. That's all for this lesson of Step 1 Review. We'll see you in the next video.